Hello, this is Trent Chapman with Short Sale Genius, and I'm going to talk to you today about SB931. I did a video a couple weeks ago and got some questions, and I want to answer these questions for you guys real quick. Um, the first one is from Brian, and he asked, Is it your understanding that the new law will overrule any deficiency reservation language in short sale approval letters? Um, yes, that's exactly the point of this law. Is even if the bank puts in their approval letter in the first lien position, as of January 1st, 2011, that they reserve the right to seek a deficiency on the balance, that first lender no longer can do that. If they're doing a short sale in California, no matter what lien type it is, they're agreeing to release to the client of liability in the first position. Uh, second question, question is from Robert in Orange County. Does SB 931 work for seconds that are purchased money as well? Um, actually, this doesn't apply at all to second liens. So any second lien needs to have the approval letter say that they're releasing the liability if you're expecting the client to have a release of liability. Um, there's not a default release of liability. Even if it's a purchase money second and it's a non-recourse loan, you need to fight the bank in that second position lien to release the client liability in the written approval letter. Um, this law did not go so far as stating that purchase money seconds were also included. Even though if a bank does a, a foreclosure, the purchase money second has no recourse, this law does not extend to the second lien. So you need to make sure on your second liens that there is a full release of liability if that's what your client expects and that's what you're trying to do. The next question is from Annabelle. Um, does this also apply for second homes or investment properties? That's a great question. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, any first lien property in California, if a bank agrees to do a short sale, they must release the client of all liability in the first position. So cash out refinance, second homes, investment properties are all included. Uh, from Debbie, I was speaking to a negotiator with Bank of America and they mentioned this new law, but she applied it to Arizona as well. Does, this, does Arizona have the same protection for sellers? Um, actually, Arizona has different laws, but they are similar. And so um, it's good that the negotiator is not um, bright enough to know that it's different for, for each state. Um, that's fine if they want to apply it to your state. Tell them that um, there's no existing law, so I still need the, the approval that are changed for Arizona. Um, and unless there is a, a law in Arizona that changes that, I'm not aware of it. Um, Kathy, she says, I watched this. It seems there's a difference between release of lien and release of liability. Um, I hope all, all of ours said release of liability. Uh, for those that don't know, it's very important that you know this. If you're doing short sales, a release of lien is basically the bank agreeing to take the loan off the property to release that property from any liens or encumbrances so it can be sold. That does not mean that they're releasing the client of the liability associated with that deficient amount that has not been paid. So if your client is doing a short sale and wants to be free from any future liability, say the bank tries to sue them, then you need to get a release of liability. And now in California, you only have to worry about that in second position liens because all first position liens now must do a full release of liability in the first position if they agree to do a short sale. Um, so you do need to make sure that you are getting a full release of liability on seconds if your client is worried about the recourse and the bank coming after them in the future. Um, just as a side note, in California there's a four year statute of limitations. A bank must pursue and obtain a judgment within four years in order for a report to be valid. After four years, the statute of limitations expires and they cannot go after the client and sue them the fifth or sixth year, say that they win the lottery or whatever. Uh, finally, Mike, uh, I received an IndyMac approval letter today with the following verbiage. The borrower must sign the attached acknowledgement of all terms specified in this approval and must acknowledge that IndyMac Mortgage Services retains all deficiency rights as provided by the note, deed of trust, and or security agreement in accordance with local and federal laws. So with the passage of SB 931, should we still get the deficiency language removed? My initial inclination is to say yes, but what is your input? Um, honestly, I can't give you a legal advice on this, but uh, it's in the law it's pretty clear if a bank agrees to do a short sale in California as a first lender, they have no recourse. So if the bank were to try and sue the client even with this verbiage in there, they probably would not be very successful. The law is very clear about that. Um, so I would say pretty confidently that SB 931 makes it so that if it closed January 1st or later of 2011, that your client does not need to worry about, worry about their verbiage being removed, but that's something you should let them talk to an attorney about. Don't give them your personal opinion or advice on that because you are not a uh, legal representative and you don't want that liability hanging over you. Uh, that's it for today, everybody. If you have more questions on any laws that may impact short sales or how it's affecting you and your business, please let me know. I'll research it and tell you how it applies and how it will affect you and your short sale business.